thanks you guys so much for for doing this, for coming by, and uh, you know we were talking about doing this together. We actually were in the jacuzzi and just feeling the uh, profound moment that is upon us on planet Earth that so many of us are going through vast transformations and. You know, as three artists, like we really wanted to share and converse and explore, you know, how art is really um, leading the charge in this, in this ascension, in this mm -hmm. pathway into greater and greater awareness. And, you know, there's so many, um, I'll say, agendas or uh, group think uh, sort of. Um, processes that are at play in our culture and um, you know I don't know about you guys but just for me I just keep coming back to uh, the inner journey going inside and how uh, greater and gre greater levels of refinement and precision in the artistry in the creative process is the way that we connect to that voice that is wanting to come through each one of us. So anyway, um, I I would love it if you guys. I'm going to open some streaming okay. on here because I haven't eaten. Um, and which one is that? This is elder. This is so. This is you have this one before, right? Okay, yeah. It's like our our purest one. It's like free. Um, but anyway, would you guys just introduce yourselves a little bit, or you know, so Kim. Um, you know, in your styling work, in your artistry work, like, I don't know, how are you interacting with art in your world, in your business, in your life, in your love, yeah. in all ways? Yeah. I mean, I feel like I try, I don't try, I live an inspired, creative life in a lot of the aspects of of what I do and whether it's work or whether it's like preparing a meal for friends or making a space feel beautiful um, or creating totem for my home brand. Um, you made this knife for us. I made this So this was like a collab. Yes. Such a beautiful, beautiful piece. Yes. I just really loved it. I'm going to just stick it in. Just it. go for it. Yay. Um, but there's as long as there's a thread that I can feel is an expansion of myself, um, of any limits, of um, where I am in the world, then, and how I can apply it in, in my life and with the people I love or meet or don't know or know, and kind of just let that guide. Um, the way I move through the world and I think about how do I move through the world and you know for me I there is a sensitivity to awareness and what something feels like what a space feels like what my senses are are picking up on and that's how I integrate all the pieces mm -hmm. and um so it's important for me to 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 feel um, sort of held by that, and if I can be and clear in my inner life, then my exterior life, my outer life, it just reflects, and I can see that in work that I do, work that I don't do, when I get stuck in a creative process. Um, when I had to take a big pause, when I had to move from New York, when I was, you know, needed to kind of rebirth my own creativity. Um, and, it, and it's a continual process. And sometimes it's like, it comes and then, and then it, I like, it's like juicy and I flow in that. And, and then I see like where that's gonna like stick in the world. I'm going to apply it to my life. It's beautiful. And, and how, how are the ways or what are some of the ways when you're 
in between these grand inspirations or these downloads, you could call them. Or, yeah. You know, I feel it as a frequency, like an energy, yeah. like I like almost like you know an animal. Like I wake up and I'm like it's something's in the air, you know. Mm -hmm. So how are what are the ways for you that you tap into that? Like what what is your daily practice or what is your you know what have you found meaningful yeah. to you? Um, I mean, I my daily practice definitely is you know meditation, yoga. But also, it is being in nature is number one. Um, and allowing my body and my nervous system to really relax. And when, I, when that happens, I can access so much more. And to be in a space that supports that, which, it, you know, whether it's my home or in nature or wherever that is, I can be inspired by everything. And, and you know, movement also helps me. Dancing, um, um, like joy, like full joy, whatever I can find full joy in helps open up the space. And if I can open up the space, then I have more access to the flow. It's cool. What kind of dancing? Anything. 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 Everything. Everything. That's cool. That's amazing. What do you think about that? I, I, I so align with everything you just said, and I, I really, you know, my. It, it's 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 amazing to see how my design world, my art world, whatever, has transformed over the last 20, 30 years, right? Where it's like. Being in You've been doing this closet. for 30 years. Close. Yeah. yeah. 30, me too, right? Me too. Yeah, it's like, it's crazy. No, it's amazing. I mean, you're both, not, you're not no. quite so much. We had yeah. a lot of the same, I mean, similarities, right? We started out in fashion, right? When I went to architecture and interiors, you went to interiors. Interiors, the same thing. And then, and then, you know, ended up, I ended up in the film business. Yeah. Um, you're like, I, I invented a game. I'm like, I invented a game. I, I did game shows. <laughs> yeah. I did game shows. Yeah. No, We're still yeah, finding out still, things about ourselves. And that's the beauty of it. That, that, that what, what I enjoyed about what you had to say, Kim, was that like, how, how during that, the time that I was doing that, there wasn't this um, awareness as to what art was the way it is now to me. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of evolution in thought to realize, you know, knocking things off, repeating things, and not really being inspired by, by source. I had a boss that called it knocking things up. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, my first job was to actually just copy people. Just copy people. That's all I did. Rip people Yeah, in yeah. fashion. Okay. And, um, and blatantly. Um, mm -hmm. So, but now I think it's, you know, I, I think this evolution of like how we perceive art, design, everything that has to do with creation is, needs this process where you really kind of crystallize your thought by connecting, you know, rather than sourcing all the time. I mean, of course, we're going to be influenced by things, but what really struck me that what you said was like that inner journey has a lot to do with our, your creative process, and that wasn't always the case. You know, that these two worlds merging is what's really exciting. You know, the the, the world of like say spirituality and art. You know, and that's always been there, but I think we kind of lost yeah. track of what was going on there. Probably. Definitely, and I mean, you've been in a very um, heightened journey this inward journey to connecting and so if i ask you the question like what is art what is art for you like right now i mean you you are an artist who is who is working you know in the studio yeah. six hours a day always yeah. without ever missing yeah. without a lot of the other business activities or like you are you are in a pure state in artistic expression so what is art mean to you right now and how do you see it like leading um influencing um you know the current state or maybe pathways ahead or timelines well now art what, what i've realized is that art is just it's pure divine connection i mean and that's what it really comes down to and it's 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 like the meditative process when you when you start to learn that the more you let go and the more you connect the more you get 
but you really, you know, it's actually receiving, right? You're receiving these beautiful, you know, these downloads or whatever you want to call it. But like, my work has been kind of antithetical to the way I live my life sometimes, which is to control things before. So, and now it's about the more I let go, the more I receive. And so I'm realizing that in that process, that like I think the way the, the process of art is so much more about letting it all go and letting it all come in than I ever thought. So because it, it's it's the more things I kind of lost in my process of trying to like make things or control things or you know create like thinking to create rather than just sitting and letting it happen. That takes a lot of reprogramming, right. yes. you know, for all of us. You know, yeah. I've been, you know, I went to school for it and everything like that, and I worked in all those industries. And it's, you know, your creativity is sometimes, I don't want to say forced, but it is kind of like you're expected. Right. You know? But divine creation comes from the opposite. It's going into nature. It's actually just letting go of everything. And so I think that's kind of like, you know, the way my process has worked. And sometimes that's the um, that's the void. Yeah. When you're in the void, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know if it's something that's going to be successful. Right. Or, and it's not it, because you realize it's not about being successful. Right. No. Also, it's just I keep thinking about this constantly. It's coming up so much, and what you're saying is, it's none of our business what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it just isn't. Right. It's just like do the work and let it take live how it's going to live mm -hmm. and and. And it's not our, it's not under our control. And then the other thing that kind of came up again, and we spoke about this yesterday, was, and I shared with you guys when I was in art school, and I was, you know, 23, or whatever, and I was in New York and going to SVA, and I had this painting teacher, and Marilyn Minter, who was amazing. And she would see us all like just getting stuck in class, like stuck, like just kind of like not inspired, not painting, not whatever. And she would just be like, okay, everybody just go for a walk. Just go for a walk and get a slice of pizza. And I was like, what? Go get a slice of pizza? Mm -hmm. And and she's like, and don't come back. Like just don't until maybe like later, way later. And we did. And that, in that moment, and I realized this later and later in my process of, of creativity or create or whatever I was doing it was if I get stuck or if I feel kind of blocked or whatever it was is it's already there everything we have and it's just about retrieval mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm in a space now where I, I'm not reading any books I can't listen to any more podcasts I can't intake any more information and I'm you and I'm tapping into my internal source when I can, when it's available for me and not forcing it. Um, and so I love that idea of like, just go for a, a fucking walk. Yeah. I just go for a walk. But I mean, what you guys are sharing and it's it's so um, validating really. And I, I don't think we're alone in knowing that, you know, we're saturated. Yeah. We're saturated with opinions of, you know, what people think everyone should be doing or thinking or feeling or w in whatever area right. and you know being spiritual beings and deeply connected as we are all you know spiritual beings having a human experience but especially in this community of you know dear allies and friends that we have a deep devotion to life and to the source and that's really the thing that brought us together but you're really validating the fact that that is how art is going to I don't want to say save the world, but expand the world, evolve the world, because it's in that very intimate relationship with the void, with the unknown. It's in the communing with that, that the um, next expansion is presented. And it's presented in the beauty of humanity and all of our individual unique ways of expressing ourselves, of being designed. And, you know, I used to love it when, you know, I would be sculpting and, you know, everyone in, in sculpture has a different hand. You have a different way your thumb presses the, the clay, you know, and it's, you can't fake that. You can't, you know, if, if you're very open with it, it's a very distinct hand 
that comes through. And so, you know, I used to volunteer sometimes at my kids' preschool and I would have the kids like, let's sculpt a dog. And then a, one child would do a very sort of literal dog. And then one child would be like a blob. And I would say, you know, which one is better? And everybody would say the dog, you know, the literal dog. And I'd say, no, both. And so, you know, really the world of art in its pure expression, which is free from, you know, the elitist, you know, um, the decision making of what is valuable and what is not valuable and what is worthy and what is not worthy in the art world. Aside from that, the natural expression of humanity, this is why there is a great perspective that the greatest thing you can do for humanity is create art, no matter what the medium is. Because also, everything begins with a thought, you know, it's an idea, and then bringing it into form allows it to manifest like it's the manifestation of it and whether that's in this beautiful knife that you crafted or in you know a shrimu wheel of cheese or in your beautiful branding that you created for me or your painting that's behind us it's like it's all infused with this beautiful communion with that very pure breath or voice that is animating all life and all of us and so, yeah. It's a waste of love. It is. Oh, yeah. It is. It is. It I is. mean, there's nothing that I have created. I, that I, my work with you has been nothing but love. Mm -hmm. So it's like, there, there's, there are even the work that I do, I, I, I have devoted myself to that. Like, that is, I think this is where we should be heading, you know, with art. It's just, and, and not to sound, you know, too, too wishy, whatever. I don't Go know ahead. Work. Just but, risk but really, it. the self-love part of that, what she said, yeah. right? the self-love part of that, that, we're always pushing that, but really, self-love is, 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 is loving whatever you created too. Mm -hmm, yeah. right? So that dog that doesn't look like the dog, yeah. if it's created with love, it's a dog. It, yeah. you know? I mean, exactly. it's, it, it's, and it's also like, it's, just, it's your creation, it's coming from your heart. That purity you know, the, of, of creation is not something it, what gets in the way is like what you were talking about as far as how we get bogged down to a podcast, to me this and that, you know, listening and being influenced by everything. The core of it all is, is sometimes I think when we're, we're so bombarded with content, the, the, to get down to the core of who you are and what you're creating mm -hmm. is a deep dig. Yeah. Because we're constantly being influenced by things that we see and sometimes that's good but a walk in, you know, in nature, or walk in a neighborhood that has you know, beautiful architecture, is far greater a lot of times than you know just scrolling and trying to find ideas. Yeah. You know, and so it's like because the ideas come from you being that sparking something rather than you repeating something. Yeah. Or is the, rather you know if it's not if you don't have access to nature or beautiful architecture, like the streets of New York City sure. will will show you in your face where you're at. Oh like, yeah over and over again and that I mean there's art in another, every part of that page that's, you know? that's in, like just human to human mm -hmm. contact mm -hmm. can also just be an invitation to see differently or yeah you know but I think that's another thing that you know that w so we very spontaneously got together yesterday like yes. it wasn't exactly no. planned which is that? Which is this amazing synchronicity that's yes. going on at a very heightened state? I know, I know, with everyone, mm -hmm. but it's like we found ourselves three artists. I was on the verge of entering into a two-day shoot for my for my brand for Shrimu, and Kim being you know a world-renowned stylist of you know home and art and fashion and all things, mm -hmm. and you being you know the word monk and designing my label and I was lucky enough I asked you to come and support me and it was you know it was really it was really out of love you you live next you moved next door to me I mean that was really the fact that I just moved a week ago yeah. and then I'm like Shree I think I'm your neighbor and you're like uh you're nine minutes away I'm like coming over and we're, we're that's it you know and and I brought you some props and some plates of totem just to have and not in my and I wasn't really in my like styling world brain at all but then as soon as you started describing and talking I was like I can't help myself like I, I could not help myself I'm like okay wait everything is just coming in and I need to 
I need to make you a mood board. Yeah, <laughs> so, and, and what had happened was I had been being tapped on by the void that was giving me some clues to a certain a certain frequency or a certain sort of bhava or emotion that I was trying to define around the brand of where I wanted to go. And then when we were just talking and sharing, we were igniting each other in inspiration and then suddenly you gave words to it in the physical, talking about the shadows, and then Brian gave word to the simplicity of it and the minimalism of it, and then suddenly we arrived, or I arrived at more clues, more refinement, and it was like, it's an intimacy, mm -hmm. and it, it was the intimacy that was trying to be communicated, and we were just so fulfilled mm -hmm. being together, mm -hmm. and I whipped up a kitchery, mm -hmm. and then we ended up in the jacuzzi, but we were just having this, really organic you know natural spontaneous sharing of art of you know beauty together and um and i think the that community piece i feel is what is really relevant for us right now like it's it's fine you can do it on your own i can do it on my own you can do it on your own like we all have amazing Resume, you we don't even have a resume, but we have a, amazing experiences, and yet it's the collective, it's the community, it's the being together that makes the whole so much more meaningful. The co yeah. co creation, right? Yeah, and 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 it's true, it's like we were inspired, and you create, I mean, you're it's such a safe space, and it's not even it's safe and and open and expansive and intimate is all these pieces together that I don't know if I've experienced that yet with you as 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 a friend because it's a new friendship that that we are developing but it was just so easy and it was like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I was like I gotta go make you a mood board <laughs> yeah. well, I got I ideas. Think a lot of that when I, I add on to that it's like I think a lot of what that space is especially here this is a sacred space. Yeah. This is a magical place. Mm -hmm. Magical things happen. Yes. Yeah. And and a lot of that is how you bring it in. Mm -hmm. You know. And you know, I spent time here and a lot of time here. And when I was working here, I I was telling Kim a little earlier that like I have never created what I created. I've never been able to recreate what I created when I was here. And it was you know it's it's called the Jai Collection, right? And it it, it was because of a lot of the energy you bring into the space that you have created and yeah. manifested and, and, and grown. And it's like, there is magic in these hills. It's true. I mean, if I really rewind, I mean, we've been here. We, uh, I was building the house in, let's see, I finished the house in 2003. Mm -hmm. And so we've been here for two decades. And much of that time I have done so much ceremony and ritual and meditation and praying. I mean, it's in the foundation of the house, it's in the land. I mean, I just found pictures, I cleaned out a closet a couple weeks ago and I found pictures of breaking ground and I'm on my knees in one of my ponchos and the boys are little boys. They're now 29 and 28. They, they were dumping a shovel of dirt over my head because I was in ceremony when we broke ground. And that has been the truth of my life here through all the different phases. And um, yeah, it's a sanctuary, it's a portal, um, and it's, it's been cultivated through that communion, through that devotion. And it is the artistic uh, flagship sort of canvas. Um, everyone in my, all my children are, are artists. Rich and I were like, oh my God, they're all artists. Mm -hmm. Musicians, painters, filmmakers. So, and, um, and you know, Rich, Rich launched the podcast here. You know, we, we've just done so many things here as well as, as, as hosted other location shoots. So it really is, it's a sacred incubator um, and it carries that, that energy. It's something, it's, it's not nothing. Yeah, it's, so, it's really evident yeah. I mean, and you can feel it. I mean, there is a, like you said, when you drove up, you can feel it, you, you can feel the air. Yeah. You know, and so conversations like this, come easy yeah. because it's like there's no you know there's there's just something that's just energetically cycling yeah. around yeah i'm gonna have a bite of cheese so mm -hmm. we were um kind of talking about tree move can i get you a love thank you um 
we were talking about Shrimu and the fact that, you know, this is a, a pure high vibrational food that really ignites conversations. You know, it's when you get a box of Shrimu, it's not just feeding one person, it's activating many people. It is so and it is um, one of the most powerful rituals that we have as humans, as human species, is the ritual of food. And so I'm really excited about, this is sort of like just the dream conversation to be sharing around Please. this, yeah, go in for more, yeah. this amazing, you know, expression that literally came through me, you know, after hundreds of hours of creating plant-based food. Mm -hmm. So going back and just being in the process, mm -hmm. then this incredible um, formulation was brought through me. Do you want more? <laughs> Not right now. Not yeah. right now? Well, I, 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 you know what I was going to say is, is, if I could add, um, one of the things I've learned from you, which is part of what Shreemu is all about, and what you are all about, that I have incorporated into my life, is just that. It's the ritual, like you were talking about. Mm -hmm. And ritual is something that I really had it through religion. I had it through being a parent. But I had never really um, embraced it the way you do. So you led the way for me to actually transform my life in so many ways, as far as like what I consider sacred in a day. And so this is this is just this. It's not even a product. You know what I mean? It's an extension of you. You know. So I just wanted to say that when you mentioned ritual, because ritual is like I never really realized how important that is. It's really beautiful. It's so beautiful. I mean, I have the same. Thank you for that. <laughs> I didn't mean to eat through your no. love letter to me, but no, you know, the, stream the, is the crunchy insatiable. part makes it nice. crunchy, right? <laughs> no, but I think if, I know if we remembered because this is something that is part of our birthright. It's not something that you know a priestess has to tell you, or a priest, or a guru, or religion, or ism. In fact, it's been kept from us. Mm -hmm. But I'm old enough now mm -hmm. to know, and I've I've spun some some creations out of this being that have been um they've been extraordinary acts of faith you know and not something that i would say everyone would engage in mm -hmm. and it makes me a little bit crazy mm -hmm. a little bit of a risk taker good, good, good crazy hopefully but um but with these rituals and and sometimes it can be very simple you know as far as like infusing water with you know intentions or or setting up an altar to a certain individual in your life and just visiting that every day and pouring the water over it's the repetition and the devotion and so i would say in every single thing that i've created in my life or transformed in my life every time a challenge has been brought to me which is you know a lot um it's the power of devotion that has provided me the pathway to transform everything. So tr trauma into treasures. And I always say this thing, and it's that I can count on my devotion. So I can't, you can't count on really, every single thing in your life will fall away, everything. It's, it's you and the void, it's you and the breath that is breathing all life, that's, that's it. And if I could count on one thing, like let's say, I was being exiled into the desert and I had to go on a test, I would take my devotion with me. Mm. Because I can use that substance with anything that I find. Like if I find your knife or I find the spiral that, in, that informed it in nature, you know, we're talking about nature, I mean nature is the most prolific artist. Mm. So if you have your devotion fueled with your pure emotion, which is the substance, then that creates the alchemy. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's meaningful. It is so meaningful. And it's not an instant gratification. So it, it's not like when you take a pill and, you know, and suddenly things are better. It's the repeated. It's the going back. It's the trusting in the void. It's the feeling that maybe you've, maybe you've made the wrong decision. But, it, but again, committing but again coming. It's the again, it's the return, the return, the return. And finally, uh, 
the world is transformed. And so this is why I feel that it's the art, it's the artist, it's humanity as artists that will transform the world, that will receive the messages, the, the inspirations, the beauties, um, as we navigate these very profound, very beautiful times and very um, confronting times yeah. uh, that we are in right now. So. You're, you're leading the way. <laughs> I mean, I you, you know, that. you're the life, you know, and, 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 and I want to say this, like, like, I can say that, like, I've observed you for a long time and, and how you operate. And I mean, it, it is an operation, it's just natural to you. And so uh, I just want to, like, say that, like, there, when it comes to, like, I mean, I've traveled with you. I see that you have a ritual with tea, with everything in your life. You have a ritual. There's devotion. The words that are used in this, you know, in Shreem, right? Mm -hmm. Devotion and being sacred. These words are thrown around. How many people truly live a life like that? You know, and I think when you talk about art, like, it is sacred. It is divine. And these are words that, that in the spiritual world are just tossed, you know? And it's like people who actually live that life. You know, what spirituality is, is how you live your life, you know? And it's like, you live a spiritual life because you've created that. And so I think when you t when you speak about art and, and, and anybody's process, that like, we can all learn from people who are actually walking the walk of what they truly believe in. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's art, you know? I mean, it's art for all of us. It's like, if we truly believe in what is given to us in these, communications with higher source, you know, and the divine and inside of us that like it liberates people to to be able to ex express themselves without worry. To do and the same. Judgment. Absolutely. Yeah, it's beautiful. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, the purity of, 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 of you know Shri, you know, um, again I've seen how it was the process, how you made it, how it and the whole thing, how it was always important for you to keep the purity and the sacredness and the divinity in every act, whether it's packaging or whether it's anything. So I'm saying this as a compliment, of course, but also about it has everything to do with how I began to approach art in my own way. You know, I pray over my canvases before I begin them. I never did that. You know, I, I, I have rituals now I never had before. And I think, you know, I think that would be beneficial to a lot of artists to realize that like by calling these things in yes you actually gain more yeah information by I've, saying i'm opening up you know it's like it's i'm here i'm here i'm the vessel let's share some of those specifics because i really this is something that came to me many years ago but i feel that if we understood the alchemical tools that we had in our hands and our hearts as artists we can up that game and we can start really participating in creating the more beautiful world that we seek to find. So do you have specifics or like, you know, what inspires you or ignites you by stepping into this exploration? Um, well, for me, it depends. If I'm working on, let's say, an interior shoot or a, a shoot that is about a space, um, okay, I'm going to back up for one second. I do a lot of commercial work, right? And so I was, I was highly moved into this line of work when in my early 20s after art school. And I was working in the East Village at a restaurant, going to school, and I was working for this woman who... She had a shop called Lake, and she would hand sew all these animals, like these amazing, like swans and birds and seahorses, and it was this like magical shop. And she lived in the back. She was 27 or 28 at the time, and I was like, oh, I want to be her when I when I get that old, <laughs> that old. And I think I was maybe 23 at the time. And she was like 50. No, yeah, no. <laughs> no, but so and so. Um, so I, she couldn't, she, at some point she couldn't really afford to pay me and I was like, I don't care, I just want to be here. And I 
was there all the time. And then at the same time, I became obsessed with these interior magazines with World of Interiors and, and Vogue Living Australia. That was like my big one. And there was this like shack on the beach and then the interior of the shack on the beach, this like little wooden structure. And I just said to myself, I want to do whatever, whatever this is, I want to do this. I want to create spaces that feel like this. How do I do that? What do I do? And I wrote letters and made drawings to all the editors of the magazines. Because at that time, there was no like emails accessible. There was definitely not Instagram. I barely had a cell phone. I don't even think I had a cell phone. And, <laughs> and I mean, I am 47, even though it's- You look 23, even though she looks 23. Yeah, but <laughs> but so it was a time. You never left Lake. You so, twenty three the whole time. So the whole time, the whole time, I never left. But um, <laughs> but I would write letters like out of this place of just it, I was called and and I made these drawings of birds. I made drawings of birds. I made drawings of books of birds. All this stuff and and I would say I have no idea how to do this, but. I'll work for free, I just want to learn. And then I found the stylist who did that um, the shoot for Vogue Living Australia. Her name was Christine Rudolph, she's Danish. And I wrote her agent, and then they were like, come, come to, come to set. And so I first started working with her, and at the same time when I was in this shop lake, this Australian incredible stylist would come in all the time, Sibella Court, and she was just like a whirlwind of just, everything like she would create stories of in spaces for whatever clients it was and I was like and she came in and she was collecting all these animals and using them for shoots and things like that and I said um, hi can I can I work for you and she was like yes come to set tomorrow and so I worked for these two a Danish and an Australian stylist and I learned for five years I assisted and I ran around New York City with a production book in my hand, sometimes a Polaroid, always a Polaroid camera, because we didn't have digital cameras. Right. <laughs> Sourcing everything I possibly could, um, using pay phones, and... <laughs> Making sure you had Instant. enough dimes. Making sure I had dimes and quarters. Oh, and 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 so be but gone. it was like, I didn't... I just wanted to be immersed in it and learn as much as I could. Mm -hmm. And I was, and in, before that, when I was in art school, I was in the sculpture department making these installations. And they would be like 30 feet long and they were of monofilament and there were these shapes and all you did was walk through them and around them. So I had this, and I, it would take me like, I don't know, four days just to finish like the smallest amount of the piece. And then I would, I would project light on it and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But I was obsessed and, again, brought to how does space make me feel and how do I feel in it? And, and so it was interesting where I was creating these spaces that had nothing in it. And then I go into being a prop stylist, an interior stylist, mm -hmm. where it was all about what was in it. And so I, my desire of space and creating space has always been really strong in, in, in a material and non-material way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's been interesting to kind of see um, where, like, where the journey of this has taken me in my work as a stylist. Because as I was saying, I do do a lot of commercial work and, and I got really burnt out for a long time and kind of had to stop. And that's when I moved to LA. But um... so getting back to <laughs> yeah, no, I'm so glad that you Sorry. shared. That no, was like no, I no, really no. went off. No, it's perfect. But I was mesmerized. Yeah, but I think I mean, you took us there. Yeah. Now I I have a better feeling of yeah. your work and where. It, but it also um, I was in Mexico a lot, and Tulum was a place that I loved to be many years ago and I would work on a lot of different hotels and and with and find and found a community that I felt really safe in and held in and 
it was a powerful place for me. And during that time, I was sourcing um, for for a hotel, and I was going to Oaxaca a lot. And I was sourcing for a hotel. I was trying to have things made. And my whole life is like sourcing for others. And, and I just said to myself, wait, I want to try to make something on my own. If I did my own collection, what would it be? And so I was like, if I did a plate, what would it be? If I did a cup, how would it look? If I did a, and so I would just experiment and then found different artisans through friends and all of, all of these different connections kind of came to be. And then I was able to kind of start giving birth to Toto. Yes. And it's, that was seven years ago and it's taken many, many different paths. Mm -hmm. um, and now I really feel like what feels the most alive? What object, how can I make an object that feels alive? Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, the material, the color, the texture, whatever that is, it has to feel alive and that it, there was another life before it. And so that's when, so what the past year has been, I mean this year, really tapping into that space. And when I'm when I was talking earlier about like so wait let me just stop so when you said there was a life before it so yes. elaborate on yeah. that so so I kind of swim in my internal world I swim and it's really beautiful <laughs> and it's like a magic garden in there and when I can access and touch and feel different parts and nooks and places. It's like I dove into the depths of an ocean and came out with like, oh wait, a shape or a feeling or a color or whatever that is. And then I now have these amazing craftsmen and women, artisans who are able to make them come to life mm -hmm. through their incredible talent and beauty. So where I'm at now with Totem is really honoring myself mm -hmm. and Totem and how we can work together and not try to, you know, if I want to expand it, not going beyond it, it where it, where it, where it goes, where it can go. Mm -hmm. And so that's also thinking about the artisans and their lives and what they can do and not pushing, not pushing to do something that's uncomfortable or they can't or so then, so I really take everything into a whole. As a community. As, as a, a whole. Community. The whole yeah, and what you've described is really like, I mean, you've been in the process in devotion to the process. Devotion. Devotion to the process. Devotion. Which is so sort of against the instant gratification yes. of the IG feed yes. and how it's all so easy. Yes. And it's like, this is just enriching me so much hearing all this background because we are new friends. Yes. And so I know that one flavor that you expressed, yes. Yes. but it gives me so much more depth and to understand like, that's how deep it was calling you. Like you just worked for free. You found the, the best. You you know, you had the thought, the idea, fueled it with emotion, then put in, it's not even that you put in the time, it's that you, you lived it, you, yes. you, you absorbed everything that you could, Yes. and now you have this access, I yes. mean, your, your magical kingdom, like, that sounds incredible, it's, 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 and is it like, is it, is it ayahuasca assisted or not? No, I mean, no. I mean, I mean, no. I mean, ayahuasca, I mean, no. Okay. But no. but but I can but ayahuasca has I've seen it through ayahuasca as well. But yeah, but you had it before. You know, you know. Oh yeah. You had way before. Way I don't before. I actually don't need to, You don't need it. I don't need to yeah. do any plan it. Is yes. there it's so yeah. it's there. That's so cool. There's a lot of purity in that. And you know it's amazing listening to what you have to say. It's like I I was the eyes of my bosses and the client was the eyes of you know, what my boss had to do. And I was hired to be the eyes out there and find things. You know, it was in that same process for a long time. So you were sourcing, sourcing, and 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 but also like accumulating so many things in my head. You know, doorknobs and 
fringe and you know whatever I could pick up. You know, your eye, your eye just picks up so many things. And when you were describing that, I was thinking of how like in our creative process, and I know that's part of yours as well. It's this kind of kaleidoscope mm -hmm. of worlds that we bring into our creative process, right? Of all these things that visual people tend to do, and they're like. Like I said, I'll forget the conversation, but I'll remember person's shoes, you know? It's like one of those things of like, I'll, I can repeat what they wore for the last week, but I cannot tell you what they have said a lot of times. Um, or their name. Or their name. Simply the shoes. Simply the shoes, from the fact, yeah. So, but, but like when you pick it up on those things and you realize that sometimes, you know, that's, you feel, you beat yourself up about that. But what you're doing is you're creating this library of, of, of resources that when you go to create something like you did, like, that you're pulling when you're refining everything you've seen, plus you're tapping into your own creative, you know, uh, connection to put the two together. It's really like what you know when when we were doing the, the Shreemu label, right? Mm -hmm. And I have so many different versions, and a lot of it had to do with these mountains out here. Remember? Yeah. If I like when I have a ski company, I right. did a really great one. Yeah. Like did, good, but, like but, 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 there were so many great ones. Like but we were I, like it was about the map. But, yeah. but the whole idea was a that ski company. Well, yeah. Well, in my in my, in my alter I ego, I'm it. like a competitive skier yeah. in another lifetime. I love it. But it, but it was about it was about like coming together with the ideas you had in your head about your experiences and what I was seeing as well and in what happens in these creative kind of endeavors I think that fascinates me is that how much editing you have to do and then also how much like composition you do with all your thoughts and how many things you've seen in your experience that you've absorbed that you forget you have that goes into your subconscious and then it comes out in your creation right mm -hmm. so you really you're not you're not pulling anything out it's already in you mm -hmm. right it's already it's already in that you know that chorus that you saw in Italy it's already in that you know you know, that piece of jewelry you see, right? And it just, it, I think it gets locked into you and then when you go to create, it comes out as your version of, of whatever you've accumulated because we're all like pulling, getting back to what we were saying earlier about like, if you are able to take that and combine it with that direct source, then- With the devotion. I mean, what, what how, how, you know, they, they say it's all about simplicity, right? Mm -hmm. And that is simplifying the process, mm -hmm. is, to, is to go to your devotional source of saying, I'm here to receive. Mm -hmm. I'm here to receive everything I've accumulated in whatever form that comes out, and I'm here to let it work through my hands. That's what I pray every every single day that I work. I say, like, whatever you have for me, come let it come through my hands. You know, because obviously, I don't use my feet. And they, not yet. Yeah, not. <laughs> but, but, no. but I think it's really interesting in the creative process how we, you know, when we're asked to come to the table to create our own version of something, how that, 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 that all mixes together to create something that's yeah. truly original. Yeah, I mean, that's super beautiful the way that you just presented that and also reminds me of, you know, as we think about spirituality in a human form and we think, you know, you, I know early in my days I would think, well, why do I want to dress a certain way and why do I wear makeup and, you know, I must not be spiritual if I care about these things. But the truth of the matter is, is that we are sensory, sensual, tactile human beings and in the scriptures of the Vedas, the first tenet of a human triumphant life is beauty. Beauty is our divine birthright, creating beauty. Now there's many ways you you know you you can choose to participate and like you were saying, you you make you know every intention to not cause harm. You know, this is you know part of the reason for Srinu, the reason for the sustainability, the you know, compassion of the product, all that stuff. But um, you know, so if we know that beauty is our birthright. In, in all these different aspects of what it means to live a human life, if we can up level that with that devotional emotion of love, of work through me, of breath, breathe through me, of I'm here, I'm present, I'm devoted, and, uh, and connect to that purity, which we all have that point. And the main point that I'll just 
offer here is that place where you first feel it's that inkling um, and it was described this way by a Swami that I meditated with um, it's the inkling it's the portal the puppy your love your beloved your child everybody knows where that is enter there enter there and understand what these hands are it's like there are I talk a lot about multi-dimensional things and galactic things and it's kind of my thing but you know the important thing is we are the ground crew so nothing is affected in this realm without us we're the acupuncture needles hitting the earth in the point and so expanding our perspective to that we're not working solo it's not just me against the world or me for the world it's like we're on a team and as we open up to that reality receiving that and understanding that we are just as valued, cherished, needed, celebrated as any expanded spirit, you know, that maybe have what we think are supernatural powers. Mm -hmm. So we are in a human body. We are here in the world of form. And when we understand and embody our roles, our blessing to be artists, in our life in all aspects creatively raising children creatively being in community creatively having food as ritual and then expanding i mean i'm i have a an affection for sculpture and for music and being the mom of four and you know so many responsibilities and an entrepreneur it's like my communion with these mediums i mean now i'm they've taken a front focus like its source and then those most pure expressions and then the others mm -hmm. and it it just feels like water it just feels like water sitting with you guys and it. listening to your stories and yes and, it, and I also yeah. feel so supportive and I'm so grateful for you. Like I've never been more unprepared for a shoot. <laughs> right. And I like, and now it's like two or three and we haven't really even shot anything yet. No. And it's like, I felt so held by, mm -hmm. you know, you were saying that you felt held by me, mm -hmm. but I felt so held by you and you hadn't even met no. till, till, till yesterday. Yes. And it's like, this is how, how easy it is and also I need to mention Leah's behind the camera right now Leah? Yeah. Um, and and also Jaya, Jaya. Um, Leah and I have been creating in this very supportive spontaneous way for many many years and um, I couldn't have shown up today if I didn't have my community my my safe talented you know able a devoted community around me um, and so um, I just want to thank you both well, thank so you. much thank you. and I think like what you said everything you were saying I was thinking that is what trust is all about you trusted you trusted the universe to provide mm -hmm. and it did and it, 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 it created this everything you're doing like even this right now like you didn't plan it but it's actually probably coming out better than you thought because you've trusted it and that's the process of letting go and that's the process of realizing like that it's all going to work out because you've already done all the work it's beautiful you know and so I love like that. I, yeah i really i really do believe that like this process has taught me about trust more than anything else i mean the process of life has taught mm -hmm. me that, Thank you for that, and um, I hope that you'll create a uh, hieroglyph of trust, oh. an O'Hara yeah, yeah. hieroglyph of trust, <laughs> yeah. and um, and I can't wait to see your mood board develop oh, and what we're going to create yeah, together, yeah. and um, and yeah, and just um, thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. Bless you. Yeah, and you. Thank well. you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Namaste. Namaste.